So today we'll be doing a deeper dive into Cubase. How to prepare your drums for mixing. Because you need to do quite some stuff before you start mixing. So let's dive into Cubase and see what we can do. So uh, we're in Cubase right now. Um, and of course the first thing you do when you uh, start preparing your stuff is just listen what you have. Uh, so we'll have a little listen. So first thing I notice is uh, there's some Fleming on the kick, uh, which I think is in the rooms. So we'll just solo the kick in the rooms and see what happens. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. This makes me think the kick has been edited separate of the rooms um, and there's just some residue of uh, non-edited rooms so we're we just gonna uh, disable this room track uh, and we'll fix this later. Uh, I think we'll have to check the overheads as well uh, because that probably has the same issue. Oh, that's even more uh, prominent, um, but that's an issue because we need the overheads, but we'll just remove the low end uh, pretty hard and see what we can do with this. It's also on the toms a bit, but uh, I guess I'll we'll manage with this. Um, so yeah, uh, we we remove the remo rooms. We kind of fix the overheads a bit. Uh, maybe we'll do other stuff to that later. Um, and the first thing we need to do is uh, check out. Like there's there's some uh, overhead noise in the individual tracks uh, and there's a nice way to uh, fix this uh, and we'll get into the hit points. So Cubase has this uh, transient detection system, it's called the hit points. Um, you, if you open the wave editor you go to hit points then you click on edit hit points uh, and what it does is it detects transients and it will add a point there. Um, Mostly it's pretty accurate, uh, but sometimes you need to go in and fix uh, the positioning of the transient of the hit point, um, which you can do just by picking up the slider uh, and moving it around uh, to the place where you want to have it. Um, and you can also use uh, shift click to delete or alt click to add if, if it detects something uh, you don't want to have triggered or if it missed triggers on something. Um, from this I usually always create uh, a MIDI track. So I, I select all the hit points, I do MIDI notes, uh, I prefer to use dynamic velocity for my snares I use C2 uh, and uh, since I already did this I will add it to a new MIDI track. So now somewhere down here I have a new MIDI track. Um, which has velocity and phase accurate uh, MIDI notes. But since I already had this done, I'll just remove this again. Um, remove selected track. Yes, it's gone. Uh, so one thing we can do with these MIDI tracks, um, and where do I have them, is here. 
uh, I send them out to a instance of uh, Groove Agent, which triggers key spikes. Um, so if I open my Groove Agent window, it, it's set up to uh, trigger uh, key spikes on the kick, snare, and all uh, four toms. They all go there to their own uh, separate output. Um, and if we uh, like mute mute the drums for a second, oh, we just can use the listen mode. Uh, so we'll listen to this, um, and these are the key spikes. So when a MIDI note hits, it will output a little tick, which is also uh, velocity uh, accurate. Um, and we can use this to set up a gate. Um, so let's have the snare here. And if we listen to that in solo, can add a noise gate. And now it's just listening to the original uh, audio, but we don't want to do that. We want to add the snare gate key spike as an input and enable it and then we'll use the external sidechain. So now it will only listen to the key spike track. We use the listen mode again. And now we can So this way we have a super clean uh, snare hit um, <coughs> uh, and the gate is being triggered by the external key spike. Or we can do the same for the other elements. So if we have the tom here, we'll just add another gate. We'll add the key spike sidechain Tom one, yep. external, uh, like a millisecond, and we'll just copy this over to the other tom. And we'll have to apply the correct key spike as an input. Do. And let's see if we need this for the kick as well. Well, this seems to have been gated beforehand, so we'll just leave that for now. Um, and another thing we probably need to do is add in samples. Um, Cubase, uh, and, and we can um, create a, a Dreamcade track, um, which is like a very short blip uh, version of the original audio track. Uh, I already prepared these, but I'll show you how I do this. So I will duplicate the snare track. I open this and it will open my hit point editor uh, again. Now I select all hit points and I create events from these hit points. So this track is now all sliced up. Uh, for every hit point there's a slice. Uh, the first one we can just remove. Uh, now we'll select all and I have a 
project logical editor preset I made, which is called Resized in Dreamgate. Uh, and what this does is it uh, will uh, resize all selected audio events to 20 milliseconds. So now I will hit apply. And you see everything is sliced up into really small bits. Now I will add like 200 samples and a little fade out. And I will prefix it with like 20 samples and a little fade in. Now I will bounce this track to a new audio track. And if we listen to this, it will sound a bit funky. Oh, we need to remove the gate. But that's all right. Uh, we won't be playing this back in the audio. Um, so I'll remove this again. Yes, because I already have done this on this snare trick track. Um, and this is a, a track which has a bunch of effects sense on it, and each effect, uh, effects channel as an instance of trigger. Um, and if I unmute this, and I already prepared a sample here, um, which is from the snare arsenal, and it will sound something like this. And as you can see, there's no audio between the hits because we sliced everything out into these like 20 millisecond uh, blips. Uh, so you can trigger super, super clean uh, and keep your details super low and the sensitivity pretty high. Uh, and you will never ever have a missed trigger. So if we add this in to the original drums, we should at least have uh, a bit of a better snare uh, sound. Well, I added a second sample for the snare. Oh, this is pretty beefy and big, but it's also. I've done the same for the kicks. And uh, to Tom's, I have added one sample as well. Oh. As you can hear right now, like we really, really beefed up everything. Um, so this is just the original drums. And this is again with the samples loaded in. So now we have another thing to do, uh, and that is uh, trying to recreate uh, the rooms, because we removed those. So if we remove all mute and solo states, uh, I have sent these MIDI tracks 
also to uh, my addictive drums uh, PSTI um, and in that I set up a kit and I soloed the room track um, so I'm not using any of the closed mic uh, sources from uh, addictive uh, and the room will sound something like this Now we can blend that in with the rest of the kit um, to give give some more space again. This is something um, I do uh, like for every session. Uh, I just check the original tracks, uh, do all the MIDI and the key spikes, so I, I can gate everything pretty cleanly. Uh, and if needed, I will add in layering of samples uh, and other stuff. Uh, and this is ju all just in uh, preparation for a mix. Uh, usually, I also have this few MT uh, plug-in on every track um, which serves as the purpose of uh, gain staging everything before my mix session. Uh, I like to have everything gain staged uh, to a VU uh, standard and for drums I use the DIN which is uh, a faster version of this. Um, so that would be some... Oh, oh. This sample is pretty nice, it's around one so I may do minus one. Now let's check this. Oh, this one. Oh, this one seems to be quite a bit louder. Oh, uh, that's all right as well. Minus one. Uh, and I do this for all the tracks, uh, so uh, I have a, a nicely gain staged, uh, a prepared session before I start mixing. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this, uh, please subscribe and hit the bell. Let me know in the uh, comment section what you think of this. Take care. Bye bye.